Security is one of the key concerns for all those who would want to come onto the cloud. It could be an enterprise, it could be a startup, it could be a small business, and they all worry about that data. How secure is the data? So let's spend some time talking about security on AWS. Security at AWS is job zero. That is what AWS talks about. That is everybody's responsibility. And it starts right from the infrastructure. We spoke about regions. We spoke about availability zones. So availability zones are the physical data centers and they are designed to be fault tolerant. They are designed to be highly available. So they are always in a group of two or more. So that way, if one goes down for any reason, we will still have the services running from the second data center. AWS has something called a shared security responsibility model, where they say that whatever happens to the underlying infrastructure, they are responsible for securing that infrastructure, such as the regions, the availability zones, the edge location, they are responsible for that underlying infrastructure. The customers are responsible for everything that they put on top of that infrastructure. So the data, the application, the access, the firewall rules, the customer is responsible for configuring access to anybody on that infrastructure. By default, AWS provides all the tools and they do not provide any access to firewalls that we create, any user that we create, or any object that we upload to the cloud. By default, it will be private, so we have to explicitly make it public for any user. We have to give them permission to do something. Otherwise, they will not be able to do anything. Whenever we add any data, then it is addressed. We have to tell them who can access it. AWS gives you a whole set of services to secure your data, to secure your applications, to secure your resources, such as servers in the cloud. We will also talk a little bit about the compliance that you need for your application to be PCI DSS compliant, or if your application deals with the healthcare industry and must be HIPAA compliant. And you need all those documents that say that your infrastructure is HIPAA compliant. There's a place to go, and it's a shared service. So you go, and you request something, and you get it. Take a look at all that AWS has to offer when it comes to security. It all starts from the identity and access management. At the heart of it, you would have who is accessing your system, and then what they are allowed to do in that system. So we are talking about authentication, and we are talking about authorization. So AWS gives you so many options to create users, you can create rules, you can manage the credentials on your own, or you can have something called Identity Federation. So you don't have to create a login for everybody if you already have their credentials in your Active Directory. Or if you want to have them connect with Facebook ID, or Gmail ID, or LinkedIn ID, or Twitter ID, they should be able to do that. This is known as Identity Federation and it allows you to do just that. They also have something called roles, where the credentials are managed by AWS and they are rotated internally. So you don't have to worry about managing credentials or storing them in the servers or passing them to the EPI request. They also have something called security tokens, which are nothing but temporary credentials. And you can allow somebody to access your application or system for a few minutes maybe. 60 minutes, maybe up to a few hours, and then these tokens would automatically expire. They also have something called multi-factor authentication. You can have all your users use this hardware or software device to authenticate themselves. You can have the MFA set up on their phones, and you'll be sure that anybody who is logging in should be in possession of that phone in order to log in. Similarly, for your application, they have something called AWS WAF. That is a web application firewall, and it's simply to protect your application. You can configure it to the best of your choices, and it will simply protect you from any unwanted traffic that you don't want to hit your application. 
In similar fashion, they have something called AWS Shield, that is the service to mitigate all DDoS attacks. It comes in two versions, a standard version and an advanced version, and the standard version is free of cost. So, it will block most known DDoS and other attacks, and you can configure it to protect your hardware or your resources from any known attacks. Let's say you know you have a lot of resources in the cloud, and you want to monitor them continuously against any security threat. There's a service called Amazon Inspector, where you simply install an agent, and this agent will keep running, will keep producing reports for you on a monthly basis. So the bill is per agent per month, and it is really very economical when you compare it with other services, which are either paid or open source and not managed. And there's something called AWS Certificate Manager. That is a service that simply manages your SSL and TLS certificate. So you can bring your own certificate and upload it, or you can buy that certificate from AWS. And in both ways, you can simply manage those certificates in one location. AWS gives you that capacity, so you don't have this hassle of managing those services. Now this is a very interesting AWS artifact that we spoke about. So let's say you need a compliance certificate that says that the infrastructure that you're running on is PCI certified because you are running an application that takes credit card information or it does some credit card transactions. You could simply come here and then you can request the artifact that you want. So you have something like FedRAMP partner package, you have ISO certification, and you can simply request that certification and you are going to get that certification over here. So these are the suite of services that AWS has to offer for security. Apart from that, there are firewalls at your instance level, at your server level, firewalls at your subnet level, there are encryption services, you can ask AWS to do their own encryption, or you can run your own encryption algorithms. There are several kinds of credentials for accessing different services. And I like to think about it like this. There was once a time when people would not go on the cloud because of security. And now, people, organizations, banks, government agencies, they're moving towards cloud because their data, their network, is much more secure than what they could have on their own data center. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.